And I don't know if you're in the mood for bad art, Jay, but if if you are, uh, just to draw up, you know what's happening with the the when you get hit and the you know the acceleration deceleration, what's happening afterwards? Uh, it's bad art time. Yes. So, uh, uh, a lot of times, uh, be, because you've you've got a head, and we'll put a nose on it here, and uh, you, you you've got a a, a brain inside, but um if if you are ex are accelerating uh, forward and you suddenly hit something uh that uh, that uh, some people basically say that the brain bounces back and forth and that the damage uh coup contra coup uh, up in front and in the back is because of this bouncing back and forth uh others suggest that the curvature of the skull acts kind of like a satellite dish and it focuses the energy to a distant location and the the question of which one of the models is accurately predicting the damage is an academic question the observation that the damage happens at point a and point b is irrefutable um the the question is is it the the brain bouncing or is it uh, energy focused blast injuries have started to give us a little bit more uh, faith that the focused energy may be more uh, important in blast injury than than the bouncing of the brain back and forth um, uh, the blast injury literally uh, uh, has a, a a force wave uh, traveling through the tissue and um, uh, gives you damage uh, all the way through. It's not just at point A and point B. It, it, it tears uh, white matter connections. Uh, white matter doesn't like to be stretched. The, the myelin sheath, if it's uh, stretched, it, it usually is going to die off as a, as a cell, the white matter uh, in the cell. So the brain could bounce back and forth, but it can also, again, act like a satellite dish which is focusing the energy to a distant location. The, the, those, those are, uh, I think, really quite clear. Um, the other thing is that um, uh, on, and you've got an insula in here as well. And it's, this is bad art. Yeah, the absolutely. Of the brain. But uh, uh, when, when uh, damage occurs, it occurs at the edge of white matter and gray matter and at the edge next to fluid and, and substance. Um, that, that, that's where torque ends up happening. Um, uh, it, if it was all uh, uniform, uh, homogenous um, uh, 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 content, it would just kind of have the, the force wave go through it. But as it goes through and something is... Uh, 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 more resistant to movement than the other thing, they tear. So the the border between white matter and gray matter, uh, the 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 edges around ventricular areas, um, and in head injury, it's very common to have periventricular white matter change. Uh, the the ventricles uh, 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 end up being uh, fluid filled areas and. Um, around the edges of the fluid-filled areas, you see little tiny white dots in the MRI. Those are periventricular white matter changes. Uh, they, they can be from post-traumatic ischemia. It, ischemia will give you these little white matter dots. And uh, post-traumatic ischemia, migraine ischemia, uh, vascular change with aging. If you're 50 years old or older and they see them, they usually say age-related or probably age-related paraventricular white matter changes, but um, it, you know it could be from trauma as well. Um, un unfortunately, um, uh, every head injury is unique. Um, if there's twist involved, like if a you're, slap or a cross, uh, if you're if you're coming straight, if, if something hits you straight in the front, your brain moves forward. Uh, the fault cerebri, the uh, uh, there's a, a lining between the two hemispheres and the brain goes forward and hits that dura lining, the falx cerebri. 
And at that point, it, it, it damages the connections between right and left frontally. But if there's a twist involved, it, uh, it, it tears connections um, uh, uh, through the brain. Uh, um, uh, that, that twist ends up being, uh, if your head is turned and you get a hit, the brain has a, has a twist to it. And, you know, you're running down the field in football and somebody throws you a pass and you're turning your head and you're receiving something and then somebody comes straight at you and hits you. So the, um, it, it isn't always direct, um, uh, d direct hit. If you're hitting somebody, you, you may have your, uh, the, 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 con the concussion for you may be straight on, but the person you're hitting with their head already turned to the side, goodness knows what the physics for that individual is. Is that more and, of a brain stem issue? Uh, it can be. Um, you, and the brain stem is pretty well protected, but at the same time, a damage to the brain stem is foundational to brain function. Uh, breathing, um, uh, just uh, basic existential function ends up happening in brain stem. Uh, you can lose a piece of your cortex and uh, you know lose a little bit of memory of something, but it's it's not as it's not like losing something at the level of the brainstem. You're going to lose foundational function. Tumors that influence the brainstem quite often end up being fatal because of their negative impact on on you know, just basic function, breathing, uh, res respiration, uh, maintenance of blood pressure, etc. So uh, you, you don't want to end up losing a brainstem. Yeah. <laughs> you can't grow it back. <laughs> no, well, you can't grow back cortex either, you know, um, uh, at, at least not uh, historically. I mean, uh, they're, uh, uh, they're, they're getting pretty fancy with what they can grow now. They're growing little, uh, uh, little miniature brain organelles, um, yeah. and uh, they've implanted some of them into damaged brains and rats, and the rats recover. So, uh, uh, goodness knows what what they'll end up doing with uh, 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 implants for recovery at some point. All these injuries now, some you can see with an EEG, some you can't. But the the techs out there, they're going to be doing neurofeedback. Like, what's happening? Like, what training is going on that helps reroute the uh, the circuit there to help these people get better? Well, um, uh, when you're Training EEG, uh, you're you're training uh, the output of a very complex system, and uh, if you know what you're doing and you train in the right spot with the right frequencies, uh, you can end up influencing brain function in a rather amazing way. Um, we've uh, taught people that have had significant brain injuries um, how to recover their function in a way that they didn't expect necessarily. 